So I'm a few hours late in getting my podcast out. I've been kind of struggling with it, to be honest with you. I really feel like God wants me to share some things and it's difficult for me just because it's very bold. It's very in your face and I know I have to be right. <laughs> so I spend a lot of time in prayer and I'm about to do this coming up next on Pastor Bob's Coffee Break. your coffee this morning. Do you have it in your hand? You know, two things you need in your hands. Your Bible, and your coffee, of course, because uh, that's kind of the way it works. And what kind of coffee is that? Well, Headbangers Brew Coffee. And by the way, on our site where you can get that, wearmetalwearfamily.com, you know, people have been asking what other things are there, and I just wanted to show you real quick. We have, uh, you know, there's t-shirts in, uh, in just about everything that we have. They're really cool t-shirts on all the posters, which is cool. There's uh, another one of those here. Um, I love this one. Isn't that cool? Think big, dream big. God is always dreaming bigger than you are. That's a cool shirt, isn't it? And then... This one is so cool. Even on the back of it, it has the little sanctuary. Wear metal, wear family, and that's what this is all about. Wear metal, wear family shirts. This is limited edition. We have some different ones coming out soon. But anyway, wearmetalwearfamily.com is where you get those and, and mugs and whatever. Okay. Enough for the advertisements and the profits, by the way, go to the homeless ministry. So folks, we've been talking about the church. We've been talking about what church is. We've been saying that, you know, church is a building, but people are the church. And sometimes the church meets in a building, but the building isn't a church. And it's really hard for us to get that concept. And it's really difficult for us to understand what church truly is. Well, I've been talking about it for a long time and we've been dedicating the whole month to that. Yeah, I've called this month, God has left the building. And we've talked about the fact that church is not a spectator sport. You have to be involved with each other. And teaching is important, but just as important as all the other parts of the church itself. And so if you're going, listening to somebody speak and going back home, and you're not intimately connected with the body, then you're not doing it right. And I am afraid as we, as the quarantine ends and we go back into the world that we're not going to get it right again. And I'm afraid that I'm going to keep getting text messages and emails and messages on uh, Facebook and wherever of people who are struggling hard because they haven't followed my advice to find an intimate body, people that you can share your life with. We talked about spiritual gifts the other day and the importance of using those spiritual gifts in each other's lives. And if you didn't watch that podcast, what? Go back and watch it. Really important knowing how to use your spiritual gifts and what they're for. But all of those things are not just good suggestions, folks. This is the answer. And I'm afraid that as we go back in and people repeat the same mistakes that we've been talking about correcting, that you're going to have the same results. And it's going to be devastating once again for you. And I just want to say, folks, that, that I love doing this podcast. I love spending time with you. I really do. And I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. And I love you enough to say, do it right this time. Do it right this time. It's so important, folks, that we spend the right kind of time with each other and that we see church for what it truly is. I'm going to go here to Acts chapter 2. It's our go-to scripture, but I want to read it in this context and I want you to see yourself in this, this uh, portion of the scripture. Ready? Acts 2.42. 
they were continually and faithfully devoting themselves to the instruction of the apostles and to fellowship and to eating meals together, including communion, and to prayers. Teaching, fellowship, eating together, spending time together. And, you know, food is how we do that. It just is. And communion included in that. And prayer. So, <clears throat> those are the four elements. And look what happens as they do that, as they were continually and faithfully doing this. Verse 43. A sense of awe was felt by everyone. And many wonders and signs attesting miracles were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed in Jesus as Savior were together and had all things in common, considering their possessions to belong to the group as a whole. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing the proceeds with all the other believers as anyone had need, because there was a lot of needs at that particular time. Day after day, they met in the temple area, continuing with one mind, breaking bread in various private homes. They were eating their meals together with joy and generous hearts, praising God continually and having favor with all the people. And what happened? Well, then they started having classes on evangelism. Then they started kind of deciding how they were going to reach people and, you know, how they were going to hand out tracts and how they were going to, you know, go and knock on doors and, no. They did this and the Lord kept adding to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Why? Because their lives were changed. Folks, the whole purpose is living your life in front of people. And when we do that, people want it. They want it. Everybody wants a better life. Everybody wants truth. Everybody wants the kind of camaraderie that happens when you fall in love with each other. That kind of group. Mm -hmm. So this is not just a suggestion. It's an outline. It's an outline for the church. It's an outline for you to become strong and vital and connected. You. You. So don't read this as a good suggestion. Don't read this as something for somebody else. And don't go back into your old pit, wherever, whatever that is, and continue to do this wrong. Become part of a vital group. Now look at this part here. And it says that um, they, uh, they continued to meet together in the temple area, the area, not the temple, but in the area. Sometimes the temple court, sometimes places in that area because it was a common area. And not only there, but they began to, um, to eat in private homes, to take, you know, to have communication in private homes, to have fellowship in private homes. Yeah. And they enjoyed each other. And it says they enjoyed the favor of all the people. And what happened? The Lord added daily to those who were being saved. Added to their numbers every single day. Well, that's exciting. But folks, not only did he add to their numbers, but he added to them. All of a sudden, those people that were lonely, disturbed, feeling forgotten, those people that were struggling with religion instead of a relationship, those people that, that needed some fulfillment in their lives found what they needed. And how important was it? They fell in love with each other, so much so that some of them even sold their properties so that other people could have what they needed. So you say, well, that was awesome, wasn't it? Way back then, 2,000 years ago. Well, wouldn't it be awesome today, too? Folks, there are groups like this. And, uh, and as long as we stay true to the Word of God, there's some that start out like this and become cults and don't do that. Make sure that you have good...
good teachers who study the word, that you have the balance. That's why all the spiritual gifts are important to work with each other because they keep us in balance as well. So when we're, when we're grounded in the word of God, our foundation is built on scripture. Our foundation is built on unconditional love of God. When we really learn to love, 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 love God, love others, love you. When we get all these principles down, folks, then we realize that we really are the church. That's what the church is. My biggest fear for you today, please listen, please listen. My biggest fear for you today is that you're not listening to me. My biggest fear is that you will go after the coronavirus is done back into the world and do things exactly the same way. You'll continue to be ineffective. You'll continue to struggle. You'll continue to be in a place where you don't feel connected. You'll continue to go to a church that is, that's only a spectator sport. That's fine too, as long as there are other things. And you'll continue to feel alienated from the very people you're supposed to connect with. Now, I don't want to hear excuses. Oh, I can't get out very much. That's fine. They invite people in. I can't find something in my area. That's fine. Start something. There's an excuse for everything, and you'll probably come up with one for not engaging correctly, biblically. Don't let that happen. Fight, fight, fight to make this happen because this is your life blood. This is how it works. This is how you're going to be fulfilled and happy and vibrant in God. So here at Sanctuary, we are really dedicated to seeing that happen. We've been doing family chats, millions of views through the family chat time, which has been awesome. We've been doing podcasting, lots of teaching, lots of fellowship, but it's all online and it's not good enough. The part that's missing is human interaction and you're about to have that soon. And we would love to help to be a foundation and a catalyst for that happening. But the most important thing isn't what we do, it's what you do with others who have skin on around you. <laughs> And we're going to continue to reach out. Our family chats are about to evolve into something even more exciting. And we can't wait to tell you about that. We have so many things that are about to happen. I can't wait to tell you about. But none of them are more important than you connecting to real people in real time right around you. So would you please make that a priority? Please make that a priority. And I would appreciate this time, I never tell you this, but I'd appreciate this time your comments below. What is God doing with you in this area? What are your plans in this area? Are you going to make some changes? Do you need to make changes? Write it all down and let's have conversation. Just, I know it's just messaging, but let's start that conversation and let's take it from there into some very real ways of having real-time conversation. And we'll be doing that with you through the internet. But again, nothing like when you can do it yourself. Well, that's what I wanted to say today. The scripture again is Acts 2, 42 to 47. And I'm going to ask you once again to make that your scripture for the day. Would you read it a few more times? And don't just read it, but apply it to your heart. And make sure that this is something that you resolve to do post-quarantine. Well, I love you folks. Thank you once again for listening and um, watching. And don't forget, really, we are blessed. You are blessed. So go and be a blessing.